Thank you for joining us today. Today's topic is organizing an inline FTIR implementation using ACES, Application, Communication, Environment, and Sampling. I'm Wes Walker. Today we will focus on Part 2, Environment and Sampling. Environment. Reactor Air 45P is prepared for the global economy. The Expo Mini Purge automatically removes power from the instrument if purge pressure is compromised. There is no conversion between North American and European requirements. The hardware is dual certified. The power supply auto switches for input, for example, US 110 volts, Europe 240 volts, so that the reactor at 45P is global ready. Only the classified area power plug needs to be changed when transferring the system between international sites. In the US, the reactor at 45P is rated for Class 1 Division 1 environments, and that includes gas groups B, C, and D. For the European Union and countries outside the EU that recognize the ATEX directive, it is rated Zone 1, gas groups 2B plus hydrogen. The temperature rating is not to be confused with the operating range. A rating of T4 means that the surface temperature of the instrument cannot rise above 135 degrees Celsius under any circumstance, even if the temperature monitoring and cooling system experience a complete failure. The ambient operating temperature range for an unsheltered reactor air 45P is 0 to 35 degrees Celsius, which is 32 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. For environments with temperatures outside these limits, we can consult with the customer regarding building and certifying their own shelter. If this is not a task that the customer wishes to pursue themselves, we can recommend a specialized instrument shelter builder. In the U.S., we typically refer our customers to Lone Star Shelters. Given the temperature range above, it is often the case that indoor installations do not require a shelter, whereas outdoor installations do require a shelter. There are exceptions to this depending on the climate control present in the building and or the climate zone of the region. For outdoor climate zones where the temperature stays within the operating range, for instance in a mild coastal or highland zone, perhaps the instrument will need to be shaded from direct sunlight, but a complete shelter is not needed. Lone Star will design shelters that accommodate heating and or cooling requirements particular to the installation site. In cases where the analysis stream contains extremely toxic compounds, a safety ball valve may be required mounted behind the sensor. Mettler Toledo provides the ball valve and controller, and XLOC instruments will provide the classified area enclosure for the controller. The ball valve is controlled pneumatically. If an increase in pressure is detected behind the sensor, the valve closes, preventing liquid from entering the optical conduit opening. Shown here is a legacy reactor air plant system, which is a React IR PMP, equipped with the ball valve sentinel sensor combination. For a contemporary system, the setup looks like this. Number one, sampling assembly, which consists of a K4 optical conduit, ball valve, and sentinel sensor. Two is the React IR 45P main unit. Three is the ball valve controller enclosure, which is mounted opposite the React IR 45P both can be placed on the same cart and transported, for instance, in a pilot plant application together. Sampling in tanks and streams. Why attenuated total reflectance for in situ monitoring applications? The path length is equal to the depth of penetration times the number of reflections on the sensor. You will observe no interference from bubbles, solids, mixing and you'll get selective information on the liquid phase in the spectrum. The spectrum will conform to Beer's law, that is absorbance equals the product of the molar absorptivity, path length, and the concentration. The molar absorptivity and path length are essentially constant, so the absorbance is proportional to concentration. On the left, we show the equation with penetration depth, which is a function of the wavelength of the radiation, the refractive indices of the sensor and liquid, and the angle at which the radiation impinges on the sensor. A typical penetration depth for a diamond sensor is about two micrometers. Now let's talk about how we actually sample a vessel or perhaps a stream or pipe in a continuous process. There are many ways you can do this, but I've circled four that are by far the most common in our experience. So we start on the left with number one. We can see how we can sample in a stream or loop 
Moving to number two, we can sample by putting a silver halide fiber probe into a dip pipe and inserting this through a nozzle at the top of the vessel. Number three shows probes inserted directly through the vessel wall. This is usually only practical if the vessel is designed with these inserts in mind. It's usually not possible to go back and retroactively make these ports. Number four shows a probe going through a drain valve. And we will devote some time to this later as this has turned out to be a rather convenient way to sample large tanks. The overall length of the silver halide accessory is limited to about 4 meters. Therefore, sampling through a nozzle at the top of the vessel will allow the probe tip to be placed about 3 meters below the dome. The leftover meter or so is needed to connect the probe to the main unit. This approach is often used for vessels in the 200 to 1000 liter range. By going through a bottom outlet valve, a vessel this size can be sampled with a 2 meter accessory. The probe shaft is designed to match the valve. The length of the shaft is typically 0.7 to 1 meter. This is an example of a 9.5 millimeter diameter silver halide diamond probe inserted through a side port of an 8 liter polymer reactor. using a high pressure React IR probe adapter. This adapter is rated to 1500 PSI and is designed so that it can be tightened and removed as many times as desired without deforming the probe body. For this reason we recommend this adapter as opposed to a conventional compression fitting. In order to secure a silver halide probe in a dip pipe a special adapter is used. It also can be removed and reattached as desired without damaging the probe's metal wall. A short model dip pipe is shown with a large flange on the left. In practice, the length and the detail at the top of the dip pipe will be custom designed to fit individual vessels. A special adapter can be embedded in a Mettler Ingold adapter for fermentation vessels. Thus, the React Air probe can be used in the same type of 25 mm port that is commonly used to mount a dissolved oxygen or pH probe. Turning our attention to flow cells, we see an example of a recirculation loop in flow cell setup. Cells have been built for flow path diameters ranging from 6 to 250 millimeters. Most flow cells are made from stainless steel, C22, or C276, but are available in other alloys such as B2, tantalum, titanium, inconel, and monel. A final example of sampling is a CIC photonics gas cell that can be interfaced to a React IR 45P. Oil and gas, petrochemical, energetic materials, and pharmaceutical applications can be addressed using this gas cell. Bringing it all together, implementation examples. In September of 2010, Mei Ling Yao of Pfizer UK and her colleagues published an article on tcetoday.com detailing their extensive use of a Mettler Toledo FTIR system in combination with the Schuh Federoff disc valve. This is a low-cost solution that has enabled PAT technology to be applied across 22 reactors in the facility without the need to modify any of the equipment, a significant improvement from the three reactors that previously had ports suitable for the IR probes. Therefore, this relatively simple but innovative valve installation has the potential to significantly impact the business through reduced batch cycle time, improved quality, and increased process robustness. The region of the spectrum used to generate a peak area calculation is shown on the top right. The trend of the reaction starting material is shown on the bottom right. Reaction progress is trended and an accurate endpoint can be determined in real time without removing material from the reactor for analysis. Implementation number two in a pilot plan. The challenge to implement a process analytical technology tool to be used in two pharmaceutical pilot plants at the same site at ESI Incorporated. Requirements. Project engineers and chemists must have access to reaction data in real time from their office area. Wireless communication desired. Operators must have access to trends of interest via their Emerson Delta V DCS. 
Operators must be able to move the instrument and probe between reactors and two plants and be able to insert the probe into any vessel chosen for a pilot study using FTIR. Probes are needed that are compatible with various Hastelloy and Glassline vessels. The temperature probe, RTD, must be integrated into the FTIR probe as opposed to taking up additional space in a nozzle. The first requirement is that project engineers and chemists must have access to reaction data in real time from their office areas. Wireless communication is desired. To meet this, a wireless subscriber from XLOC was used. Using this hardware, the FTIR was connected to the wireless subscriber via duplex multi-mode fiber. The wireless subscriber communicates with the wireless access points located in safe areas close to the pilot plants. This enables project chemists and engineers to view reaction data, spectra, trends, and spectra versus time surface plots from their offices. The wireless access point in turn sends trend data and instrument diagnostics to operators working in the plants who are monitoring the information through their distributed control system. Requirement number two. Operators must be able to move the instrument and probe between reactors and two plants and be able to insert the probe into any vessel chosen for a pilot study using FTIR. To meet this requirement, a Schuf Federoff drain valve and silver halide probe with embedded RTD were used. Requirement 3. Probes are needed that are compatible with various Hastelloy and Glassline vessels. For probe compatibility, probes were chosen that are C-22 and tantalum. The C-22 probe, the wetted materials are gold, which is a small seal that sits between the diamond sensor and the C-22 of the probe body, C-22, and diamond. This probe allows access to a wide range of chemical systems, especially in the customer's Hastelloy reactors. On the tantalum probe, the wetted materials are gold, diamond, and tantalum. This probe is used extensively in glass-lined reactors. Our final implementation example is from a production plant. It comes from the Journal of Process Analytical Chemistry. The title is Harsh Environment Mid-Infrared Process Analysis. It was published by Troy Francisco and co-workers at Honeywell. The topic of the paper is HF chemistry, the wetted materials for the sensor and flow cell are diamond, gold, C276, and Monel. On the left, a graph is shown where PLS calibration models were used to predict the concentration of the components of interest. On the right, a schematic is shown with the setup being the React IR, a host PC, a PLC, and a distributed control system. The analyzer needed to be placed in a corrosive outdoor environment. The sample transport system is shown in the figure. The process conditions were 90 degrees C, 11 bar, and a 35 liter per minute flow rate. The sample transport system included Monel, PFA, Hastelloy, and heat trace insulated piping. These findings were made regarding process optimization results. The easiest benefit to realize from this installation is the ability to run the plant under more aggressive conditions than in the past. The offline analysis provided data three to four times per week and the results were always questionable. Now the board operators have fresh data on the recycle stream every 15 minutes and have a high degree of confidence in these measurements. Since this process stream is recycled back into the reactors, it is critical to know the amount of feed material that is present. Additionally, the level of the C intermediate is known to vary because of changes in front end conditions and catalyst activity. Significant increases in production, directly attributable to better recycle composition data, have been realized already. The paper concludes with the following Placing a process analyzer in service in any manufacturing plant can be a daunting task. A corrosive outdoor environment, no reference analytical method, and limited understanding of the process stream composition and physical properties can add several layers of complexity. Even though the time from conception of the idea to complete implementation in the field was lengthy, 
This project is perceived as a success at all levels in the plant. Management initially considered it a technical success, but could not quantify any financial benefit. Recently, the production teams have found that the data are critical during upset conditions and when the rates are being ramped up to satisfy customer demand. It is a testament to the entire analyzer team that support has been maintained and even increased during the development and installation stages of this project. No dollar figures will be tallied until later this year, but the results speak for themselves. And the plant personnel speak freely and frankly, and their satisfaction is the key metric. To quote the plant production manager, I wouldn't trade the FTIR for anything.